Okay, the next talk will be given by Falls, Falls, Oxford, and Birmingham. No, Birmingham, but given in Oxford. Okay, so I was given the task to tell you something about continuous structures, and I have to give a disclaimer at the beginning that nothing what you see here is actually new or was done by me. It was, everything was stolen from the literature and from some people sitting in the literature. So, also, in trying to prepare this talk, um, I noticed that the topic for Venus algebra is so vast uh, that um, I have to concentrate on something. So, I will try to concentrate on this one, because this is your favorite uh, example. Okay. So you, you know this uh, type of thing in the Frobenius structure, you want to get rid of these uh, banded lines where you actually want to do this. I, I want to uh, exemplify a little bit why and when you can do this with a special focus on not using algebraically closed fields. Okay, so a little bit of history. Who invented it? Frobenius. Algebras obviously were invented uh, to some extent by Frobenius. And um, the archetypical graphical thing which we want to construct is this type of move, which uh, I also, by the way, like Sean Nashik used the tangle diagrams in the pessimistic error of time, reading downwards. Yeah. Um, so here you have this type of product and co-products. And Frobenius hit on this problem when uh, actually studying the character theory of the symmetric groups. Uh, you have a left regular and right regular uh, action, and you want to know uh, under what conditions the left and right regular actions are actually isomorphic, so that they give you the same representations. Another theme which we have to consider, or which comes into place, is uh, Finite Hopf algebras, and they were invented uh, by Heinz Hopf. If you look at the original paper, it's not so easy to find the Hopf algebras in the Hopf paper. And uh, originally, what was called Hopf algebra in the early days is actually nowadays a bi algebra and so on, so it's, it's not easy to find it. But the, the archetypical graphical thing, what you also saw in the very glad chant in all these pictures, yeah, uh, is that you have this product and co-product, and now you have a different kind of compatibility law, which actually in this uh, guy says that the algebra is, uh, that the product is a, a co-algebra homomorphism and vice versa. As Sean also has pointed out, there's a horizontal symmetry. You can turn it upside down. Okay, and um, here you demand that the identity is invertible under this convolution product, and that is just antipode as shown as already shown here. So, um, what you actually want to do, um, you let K be a commutative ring, uh, maybe finite field or whatsoever. Uh, and you pick some generators, so all modules which I look at have to be finitely generated, so I can pick a set of generators. It will we, turn out to be an essential part of the structure. So you may safely think of the group algebra of symmetric groups, and then from the multiplication of two generators, you get what you would call a multiplication table. And from the multiplication tables, you can manufacture the left and right regular uh, representations by just fi fixing either the i or the j, then you get a, a two-dimensional array, and these arrays will enjoy a matrix multiplication type of uh, product, and that is a left or right regular representation. And Frobenius asked himself, okay, uh, these things look very different eventually, when are they uh, identical, and you have a third type of uh, choice, you can fix the K, then these things no longer form a representation, so uh, you cannot multiply them, but you can uh, 
just form uh, by picking some parameters AK, uh, what's called a parastropic matrix. And then the original theorem of Frobenius is that if this parastropic matrix for some choice of AKs is invertible, so the determinant is non zero, then the left action and the right action are actually as well. And that's a you know, archetypical uh, definition of Frobenius, and you will see that there are many more. So, as an example, take the polynomial ring in commutative x and y's factor out this ideal and you can prove that is Frobenius but not everything is Frobenius if you take the same polynomial ring and factor out this ideal you can show that this parastropic matrix will be singular and it's not Frobenius happily um, so matrix algebras over division rings are Frobenius so, so that is a very wide right class and use much yeah. now I, I have to focus on some things uh, which are this topological move and you saw this also in Chan's talk so I will just skip this slide and go to the diagrams so we have this evaluation move and this co-evaluation move and I, I put the orientation on it because in the case you have these ratings and these things you will have also a, a left evaluation and a left group evaluation like you have a right evaluation so here I'm taking the Islamic reading order versus the Christian or Western one yeah? so um, you, you have these two type of things if the category is uh, actually symmetric then you can flip the lines and see that these evaluations are actually the same and uh, the, the main thing of this uh, evaluation and co-evaluation is that they fulfill this topological move and this is not the yanking move of the movie at the beginning yeah? it's a different type of thing it's just a duality in this category and you get it for the duals and for the vector spaces in case the thing is braided you have to be a little bit more careful because uh, then you should look at these things as ribbons but you can use uh, the Weidemeister 2 move, so move this a little bit to the left, bend it by this type of move, move it back, then you come to this image, then pull this down, you come to this image, you use uh, the functoriality, as Sean has explained, to move this up, then you use um, the, the other oriented move like this, uh, pretty print it and you get this one, where you still have this twist left and this twisting is uh, a ribbon element in, in this phase. I do usually write the symmetric tangles and not this one. So. Now, uh, to approach the Frobenius, uh, we should look at bilinear forms. There's another way to, uh, uh, to construct dual elements. If you have a non-degenerate bilinear form on, on some space, vector space or projective module then uh, under the condition uh, I will only look at regular associative bilinear forms a bilinear form is associative if uh, the bilinear form of A times B with C is the same as the bilinear form of A times BC and I always always assume it's non-degenerate yeah? so we can try to classify these things um, and we can call two of these linear forms uh, identical if they are homotetic. So you find a non zero K and a, a symmetry of, of this linear form so that such a relation holds. You would not call these linear forms essentially different. It's a base change and a scaling, so to speak. I call a linear form symmetric if it's symmetric. Yeah? I have something rather weird, that is, if the thing is not symmetric, then there exists an automorphism, it's called Nakayama automorphism, so that when I flip the entries, I get the action of this automorphism. And of course, if the automorphism is identity, then that is symmetric. And just to show you that this automorphism has some weird features, if you have a symmetry acting on B, you can define the transposed symmetry with uh, respect to the B-linear form 
but the transposition of the transposition needs not to be the vector space itself, but the uh, uh, automorphism action on this vector space. And only if this is uh, uh, automorphism of finite order, you come back to uh, the original. Another thing what you can manufacture from uh, these bilinear forms is what's called a Frobenius homomorphism. That's if I, if I plug in a one, either in the first or second slot, uh, then I can construct a linear form on A. And this linear form is obviously symmetric if beta was symmetric and it's a trace form. Mm -hmm. Okay? So in a graphical way, the associativity of these uh, betas actually look like this. You, you can plug in the product and you can just move the thing on the other side. The linear form is just manufactured like that. And okay, here you see uh, the, the, the symmetry if it actually works in the transposition. Okay, now you can use duality for linear forms. So uh, you can manufacture these left and right actions uh, now using the beta just by letting A act via beta on the vector space. And um, now we can actually dualize our vector space with this beta and define something which is called a Frobenius system. So a Frobenius system for A is a triple from which is a spilinear form, a set of XIs, so I did not print the set brackets, yeah, a set of YIs such that for all A in A this uh, relation is true. Uh, so you can look at this beta if you are a physicist as a red producing kernel or whatever, yeah. Uh, and this is our Yankee move uh, where we use this bilinear form and not the duality. So um, at, at this point, yeah, okay, we wait a moment. Actually, um, Sean has already pointed out um, this thing here that you find these generic elements for the duality. And you want also to see if there are generic elements of the same type, but from this beta dualization, so to speak. And that has to do with separability, so I have to pause a little bit. Actually, this is a slide explaining what Sean has uh, uh, said about uh, differentials. So I can safely skip this to have a chance to finish my talk. So what you actually need to know is that you can manufacture on a module uh, a derivation, you want to get the Leibniz rule, um, you ca can for any M find an inner derivation which acts like M, and M is a bimodule uh, by the way, and dM is zero exactly if that is an A invariant in M, which is this condition. And then you get a sort of exact sequence, so zero to the A invariance to N to the derivations, and you can actually construct an ideal uh, of these inner derivations, and um, then we can look at something as a definition of, I've skipped the definition of AE, so AE, is the enveloping algebra A tensor A op, where A op is the algebra with the product uh, slip. So, um, what you can do is to apply this HOM to the ex uh, exact sequence, and you get this Hochschild homology 1. And the, the, the thing what you actually want to say is this theorem for K algebras. A, it's equivalent to say that A is projective as a left A E module. That means especially that you find a finite set of generators for A. Um, and that this sequence is split. That means there is a morphism from A into A tensor A op. So, so that uh, this splits as a direct sum. 
there is this uh, element E, uh, which in the Swedler notation is E1, E2, in A tensor A, so there's no star here, yeah, such that A uh, is uh, fulfilling this type of condition, that the left multiplication on A is the same as the right multiplication on A. That means this E is an A invariant in the enveloping algebra. And that the sum, if you multiply this, uh, is 1. And such a thing is called splitting idempotents. And this plays the role of this relation. And then there are some, some consequences which you find, for example, in the book of Cartesian on any decent text on continuous algebras. So that the, the separability condition is actually the same as you saw before in algebra, before, if, if you just let, look at ordinary text in algebra. Now, there is a, a tremendous list. I think there's a paper of Ostrid listing 12 definitions of uh, or equivalent characteristics characterizations of Robinius algebras. I've picked a few of them. So uh, the following is equivalent. A is Robinius. Um, the left and right regular representations uh, are equivalent. There exists A in uh, K to the N such that uh, the parastropic matrix is invertible. There exists a regular associative bilinear form and the Frobenius homomorphism lambda. There exists a hyperplane of A that does not contain any non-zero right ideals. There exists a Frobenius system, and that's the most important for us because that will allow the yanking at the end. Yeah? Uh, this a Frobenius homomorphism and uh, this lambda is the composition of the product with the beta, so to speak. And um, there is the splitting item potent, which is uh, Central in this sense, and many more of them. This is by far not the only thing we can say to characterize continuous algebra. So now, um, I actually promised in the abstract somehow to come to the Jones item potent, but it will not happen, it just have not in the time. Now. But uh, what you actually want to do is to extend this not to algebras, but to the rings. And you want to look at rings and ring extensions. Uh, so you look at uh, a ring extension so that you have a homomorphism from S uh, in, into A. Set of A is the center of A. Um, so such a ring extension is an algebra uh, if this S is a commutative ring and E factors through the center. But that has not been to, to, to happen. General. Uh, A over S is central, and if it's I of S is the center, and proper if, if it's I not wrong. So now we can look at the uh, categories of S modules and A modules, say right modules. Yeah? Um, and you can look at the restriction functor where, where you uh, just uh, restrict the A action to the S action, but you also can. Uh, uh, construct induction functors, if you like, the adjoint and co-adjoint versions, where, where you allow this, act, this error to go in the other way, and where you extend the action on the module. Um, and now we can prove that uh, these two pairs, T and R and R and H, are adjoint pairs of functors, and this gives a very important definition. A ring extension uh, is called a Frobenius extension if H and T are naturally uh, yeah, H, sorry here, that should be H. Yeah? I'm sorry about that. Yeah? So my restriction from those R, this, this is H. Uh, it's a type of, so if H and T are naturally adjoint functors from MS to MA, and that has a certain type of consequences, especially once more we get this Frobenius homomorphism <coughs> and we get this x, y which form our splitting item. And this is a starting point if you want to read about such things, for example, taken in the book by 
I'm not sure if I can pronounce his name, Stefan Kanepil. Kanepil. Yeah, Militaro and uh, Zoo, uh, where you can study Frobenius functus on uh, module categories, and that has many important consequences. But I cannot go into this. Uh, I want to go back to the tangles. So the lambda multiplication, um, we, we use a couple of isomorphisms which we can establish. The endomorphisms on AS can be written in this way as A tensor S uh, A star for right and left S modules. And then the multiplication uh, is done by using this co-evaluation, uh, this evaluation map. That is the this evaluation which was used by Shan in the sense that every endomorphism has a tensor product representation by an element in A and the element in A star <laughs> and you can act uh, just by acting this F on B and then there's a theorem that a Frobenius extension with a system lambda X and Y then uh, you can produce uh, an isomorphism between A tensor A not A star and end AS as rings, so especially you get a new type of multiplication on this, which is called lambda multiplication on A, and the lambda multiplication, so I use for composition the semicolon here, yeah, is that you have this element in A tensor A, and this element in A tensor A, and now you do the same trick as here, only you multiply the things by using the Frobelius homomorphism. Okay. And, uh, okay, you, you once more have this uh, element E as a sum of those. And we had seen that we could define isomorphisms of regular associative bilinear forms by these homotetic transformations. And you can show that if you are given a Frobenius system and an element D in the centralizer of S in A invertible, then all other essentially different Frobenius systems are given by lambda D, Xi, D to the minus 1, Yi. So that gives you an overview where to look for particular um, different Frobenius systems. And this uh, D so, so in the centralizers, that has to do, if you look in a different way on it, onto the module of trace forms uh, and the Cartan map in the Gordon D ring of, of, this, uh, of these module categories. So that's an important way to look at different Frobenius. Okay, now uh, the Frobenius multiplication and the yanking, so uh, actually why it works again, yeah. We are now in the position to produce a different type of multiplication on uh, these endomorphisms. So we have this multiplication from our Frobenius algebra and we can now use uh, in two ways uh, the, the structures which are given to us. In one way we have this AF and BG and when this information or whatsoever you think of it flows down we can use the evaluation here yeah? and then we just get an element of the endomorphisms again on the other hand we can now use uh, the A tensor A picture where all the orientations are down but now we have to use the Bilinear form from the Frobenius algebra to just close up these two tangles and we have another A tensor A element and the key fact uh, why this works again so what we actually want to do is we want to uh, we want to simulate this evaluation co-evaluation thing here so we have this type of topological move uh, for the evaluation and co-evaluation which come, comes true in any rigid tensor category which has this type of tangles. Now here we have the same type of thing only that we use only 
down what's going uh, inform the information flow. And sometimes uh, you see this confusion with electrons and positrons, are they moving uh, in forward in time or backward in time? Yeah? Um, or you, you possibly know this type of tangles from the local people. Yeah? Uh, you see this type of things. And then there's this, this information flow. We saw in the morning this type of uh, linguistic things where you have this information flow going through these boxes here. Yeah? And here always there, there, there is a sort of discussion if the information is flowing up and down. And you see the Frobenius structure is exactly what tells you that you are allowed to use a bilinear form, a non-degenerate associative bilinear form to model this type of relations. Okay, now the last few minutes for Hopf algebras and Frobenius algebras. So Sean has told you lots of things on Hopf algebras. So um, K is once more a ring, but a particular ring. I don't go into this, uh, it's just a technical condition. I have this core unit, I have the integrals which Sean has explained, so, so the tangled version of the integral is just like this. And from this integral you can construct the right norm. And um, you should be careful if you think of uh, quantum computation. It's easy to show that Clifford algebras, for example, don't have this type of structures in general. Um, now there's the famous uh, result of Larson, Sweetler, and Paragis that if H is a finite projective Hopf algebra over K, um, then there is a right Hopf module structure on H star. And the, the most important thing for us is there exists a left integral that is uh, UL such that you can construct such a theta from H to H star defined uh, using the antipode and this integral so that this is a right Hopf module isomorphism and the, uh, the antipode is bijective so there exists in, uh, a linear inverse of the antipode, not a convolutive inverse and H is a Frobenius algebra with a Frobenius homomorphism. And the crucial thing is that uh, these integrals have to exist. And of course, finally. <coughs> and once more, you get then this type of uh, move. But now you here have a product. You use this co product, this, this uh, E element here. Yeah? And you can use it both ways. And possibly up to a grading, and uh, this here is then the definition for the co-product of the Hopf algebra. So you can cook up the co-product out of these structures. Okay, here are some consequences and differences between uh, similarities and differences. So if you look at the Hopf algebra, there's this famous Cooperberg letter. So if you look at this type of, of up and down move, you find easily here, by putting here antipode, can uh, use associativity as Sean did it, then you can disconnect this as he showed that these antipod loops uh, vanish. You get the identity showing that this tangle is invertible. Yeah? Now, um, what you also can see is that these two tangles have the same characteristic polynomials, so they have the same uh, non zero eigenvalues, so that they only differ on the kernel. The same is true for the Frobenius ones, so, so the Hopf are the, the right ones. Yeah? So you see that the Frobenius yanking uh, cannot be invertible. Yeah? So the, the Frobenius thing is totally different from a Hopf type of thing. Now you, you find a sort of bi algebra property, if I did this correctly, you just use Frobenius, 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 and a little bit rewriting, and you get this type of tangle. And so if this loop is one, that means the Frobenius algebra is called special when you get the bi algebra axiom for, from the Frobenius structure. Okay, so there's a qubit view on the Clifford algebra. I told you Clifford algebras are different. And that's a pre last slide. Yeah. Um, so what you can look at, say, I look at the real Clifford algebra, the complex numbers. And I get the generators, not the matrices yet. Yeah? And I get some idempotents. Then I get a, 
regular eight dimensional because this algebra is eight three dimensions representation, but I get also a center seen as the real uh, complex uh, the algebra of real algebra of complex numbers. And then the spinners in these Clifford algebras are actually uh, left ideals from these projections. And the left ideals have a left CL3 and the right complex number action. And on the spinner space, uh, that is an uh, irreducible matrix representation, you have a Frobenius uh, structure. So you can look at this matrix representation and you can cook out the ordinary trace on the spinner modules. You get your splitting item potent, which uh, projects on the complex ring here, not on the reals. Uh, and you can cook up a Frobenius product and a Frobenius co-product. And okay, nobody is done here. Let us say this is just copying of the basis. Yeah? Okay. Now, I hope that this talk has taught you somehow to understand why you can use this quantum teleportation protocol using Frobenius structures. Yeah? Mm. So, uh, <laughs> you all know this, yeah? uh, how Bob actually does the trick. Okay, so here is, uh, if you like, but I don't go into this uh, list where you could go if you would like, and what I haven't told you, and it's quite a stunning long list. Uh, and that's where I took and stole everything. Thank you very much. Thank you.